the next generation of aerospace engines could very well be plasma state. Plasma is often called the fourth state of matter, where a solid can melt, a liquid will boil, and with enough energy, a gas can be formed into this state, where particles have been ionized, meaning that electrons separate from their atoms, making a subatomic medium. But what makes plasma so useful is that it can be manipulated with currents or magnetic fields. Furthermore, if you heat it to 100 million degrees Celsius, then you can create fusion conditions. We see different techniques such as magnetic confinement, lasers, and even Z-pinch technology to obtain this sustained power. However, fusion sustained power is very difficult to contain. And even though there have been innovations, there is not one reactor that can supply power to the grid. But what is widely unknown is that you can actually utilize fusion in propulsion drives. And based just on timeframes alone, a fusion drive could be easier to build than a sustained fusion power source. Today we are starting to see some preliminary devices that utilize colder based plasmas in order to drive a propulsion system. Meaning that they can be one day incorporated into the jet engine itself. Several years ago, China revealed a prototype of a microwave thruster. Incoming air is subjected to a very high magnetic field, stripping electrons and creating a plasma. This plasma goes into a waveguide and it's basically heated up to 1000 degrees Celsius. This is a far cry from fusion based plasma, but nevertheless it does create thrust further down the tube. Roughly 6 pounds per kilowatt. Ironically, this plasma based propulsion system has a similar problem to electric aircraft. It needs a high energy density source. And right now, batteries are about 20 times less the energy density of jet fuel. The good news is that the system could be one day be powered by a turbo generator, such as the Rolls-Royce variant, which could reach about 1200 kilowatts. However, these types of units are pretty heavy at a couple hundred pounds, and they also need to carry fuel. We also have to consider that this is a very weak type of plasma. It works at a very low temperature, and the ionization is just not enough to make this type of thruster practical at all. Theoretically, if you can overcome the engineering challenges with a turbo generator, you might get something that can produce five to 6,000 pounds of thrust. You could make the argument that the aircraft could be powered by a nuclear reactor, but just cost and the feasibility alone, it makes more sense to go to an electric motor or just even the turbofan itself. So when we look at current microwave-based plasma thrusters at several thousand degrees Celsius, they have huge power requirements and they're not going to outperform a typical turbofan that has an afterburner and can produce 30,000 pounds of force. That's not going to immediately happen. But what we do know about plasma based thrusters is that if you can heat them up high enough to fusion conditions at 100 million degrees Celsius, then they could produce enormous thrust, but have very good specific impulse. So that means that they can be very efficient from point A to point B. They may not outperform a conventional rocket to get to low Earth orbit, but they could produce several hundred thousands of miles per hour speeds in space. And that's what makes this type of plasma-based system very interesting. Now, Vasmir is a leading example of a plasma-based thruster which can deliver very high velocities in space. However, there is no incoming air, so an inert propellant is utilized and heated using radio waves. The VX200 variant can heat plasma to 4 million degrees Celsius at roughly 100 kilowatts. This is far from the temperatures of fusion conditions, but nevertheless, it could technically reach 123,000 miles per hour. But I do caution about the extravagant claims of reaching Mars in 39 days, because this would need an enormous power source, roughly 200 megawatts. And ironically, there are very few things which can supply this kind of power, one of them being a nuclear fusion reactor. So we are kind of going in a full circle of fusion being available in 20 years from now. So we have to approach fusion in a different way to utilize it as thrust. And Helicity has done exactly that. They have developed a magnetic inertial fusion device that has both high impulse and specific thrust power. They utilize deuterium and magnetic reconnection as a heat source. It can be compared a little bit to Z-pinch technology where it combines the properties of a spheral Mach and shear flow. And this can get plasma to supposedly fusion conditions at 100 million degrees Celsius. But the key here is that it's doing it in pulses. So it's something that can generate thrust, but it doesn't have to produce constant power and stabilize the plasma for long periods of time. A series of coils are utilized to transfer the traveling magnetic field. 
and this holds the plasma for a very short amount of time. Once it reaches the exhaust, it can produce a very sustainable amount of thrust. The advantage to this type of drive is that it has a higher impulse when compared to something like the Vasmir. It will not replace conventional chemical rocket, but it could change how we travel in the solar system in space. The company is already producing prototypes and will have a proof of concept which can run on solar electric within the next couple of years. But I have to reinforce the idea that this is a power driven system. Another ambitious project comes from Pulsar Fusion and they also claim to be able to reach a 100 million degree plasma, which can obtain 500,000 mile per hour speeds. It's not as technically detailed, but it is speculated to utilize a similar electromagnetic confinement to guide the plasma to the nozzle. They do have experience in developing rocket engines, and they're situated in a little bit of a better financial position for developing a fusion drive. Currently, they are simulating plasma control, and they will begin prototyping next year. In conclusion, a plasma-based drive in the atmosphere could one day be a viable system. And if we can heat the plasma enough, then it can be utilized in a fusion drive system. These types of drives could be some of the fastest propulsion systems ever developed. And as of right now, we can build solar electric prototypes that can work in space. But if we want to get to the half million mile per hour mark, then we'll need a stronger power source. And as of right now, that is still quite a few years away. But more importantly, I would like to know what you think about this propulsion system. Is it viable and can it propel our next generation spacecraft? Let me know in the comments, like the video if you enjoyed it, and also make sure to subscribe to my channel.